So the next job I have on my list is this little field area, which is just down beside our horse riding ring. We have a number of small fields like this on the property uh, that are outside of the main fields, the main horse pastures and hay fields. And we want to keep them open to a degree just to add more diversity to the uh, farm. You can see here there's a number of, quite a number of tiny white pines coming in. And if we leave those here, it'll regenerate into a very dense white pine thicket almost. They get so dense, and we have one of these up at the north end of the pit. They get very densely packed, and so as they grow, they get very tall and straggly. They're fighting for light, and they're shading each other out because they're so densely packed. Anyhow, I'm planning to just go through this field with some loppers and cut these down before they get any bigger, because if you wait even just two or three more years, these trees will be five feet tall, six feet tall, and then they're increasingly difficult to get out. So I'm just gonna go through here and snip them out one by one. And that way we can maintain these little field openings for animals and plants that like to live in fields. Quite a few species prefer to live in this kind of habitat. And it's nice to just provide those diversities of habitat for a, a wider range of species. The so white pine are easy to take care of when they're small like this, because once you cut them, they don't regenerate, they don't come back. Whereas some deciduous trees will do that. I really don't like cutting trees of any type down. It's just in this case, we hope we're doing it for a good purpose to maintain diversity on the farm. Okay, just after about 20 minutes work and I've gone through this little field area and just cut back those tiny pines. Now this field will be maintained for a longer period of time. Obviously, succession tends towards regrowing trees in this area. So if you never did this, the trees would come back and eventually this little section would become white pine forest for a while I guess and then uh, succeed into whatever else after that but I'm actually going to bring one of my bluebird boxes out here and put it on a metal pole and they like this kind of open habitat so I'll probably just go through here quickly and pick these up and pile them somewhere just to make it look more field like even because these take quite a while to degenerate and turn brown and all that kind of thing so there we are, all the small trees removed, except for a couple that I can see from here, but by and large, most of them are gone. And it looks more field-like already. I'll have some more fine-tuning to do here, but that got rid of the main bunch that I wanted to get rid of, because like I said, if I was to leave those another two or three years, they'd be five and six feet high. And then they're really a lot of work to get rid of. A lot of biomass once they start growing and they grow so fast that's the hard thing with white pine now it's good in some cases if you want that but where they're growing and you don't want them to grow so fast they can fill in an area very quickly so habitat value increases with the size of the habitat now obviously this is a very small section of field however even despite that we find a nice mix of animals and plants that utilize this area. So for animals, deer will come out of the denser forest at night and graze in these small habitats. Obviously, if you let that grow up into a white pine, dense white pine stand of young white pine just blanketing the floor in needles, you wouldn't have that diversity. Um, so you got the deer coming out to graze. There's a number of insects and butterflies that I've seen in here that are quite interesting. They're not found everywhere, so they even utilize these little patches. Sometimes rare insects will utilize very small areas, and it's just where they've been for maybe thousands of years, and they continue to reside there as long as they're not disturbed. Not saying this is one of those. This was probably a field not too long ago, and at one point it would have been forest, and then it was deforested maybe a hundred or more years ago, and so it's undergone a lot of changes. But we're just trying to maintain this as a little bit of a field. Uh, other species that utilize this type of habitat, you'll have wild turkeys coming out here to graze. 
woodcock nest in and around this field because there's some shrubs they can nest under and there's some adjacent open woodland they can go into with alder thickets and things and woodcocks like that. So just a lot of things, hares and rabbits, fox and coyotes hunt in these open areas as well as in the forest, but it's all utilized and it's nice to have the diversity. Loon is sleeping in the shade of the juniper here as I was cutting these little white pines. Oh, now she's awake. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go, Luke. 